Welcome back. We're in Exodus chapter 7 now, and today verses 3 through 7. Are you ready? Here we go. But I will harden Pharaoh's heart that I may multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. When Pharaoh does not listen to you, then I will lay my hand on Egypt and bring out my hosts, my people, the sons of Israel, from the land of Egypt by great judgments. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch out my hand on Egypt and bring out the sons of Israel from their midst. So Moses and Aaron did it. As the Lord commanded them, thus they did. Moses was 80 years old and Aaron 83 when they spoke to Pharaoh. So God is going to do his wonders in Egypt. He's going to lay his strong hand on Pharaoh's supposedly strong hand, and he's going to deliver his people from Egypt in spite of Pharaoh. See, and that's kind of a piece of what's going on here. Pharaoh's worldview is not up for negotiation. Pharaoh is not willing to renegotiate that. It's like, I'm the Pharaoh, I'm in charge, I'm more or less a god around here, and no, I'm, I, that's not, we're not even going to talk about that. And you know, today, most people are in the same place. Who's anxious to give up or transform or change their, their worldview? Almost nobody. And you know, when you're under all this incoming stress and pressure that we have, I mean, if you had zero of this incoming stress and pressure, you still wouldn't want to do it because habitually, you get into a habitual practice, you live this way, you think this way, you do things this way. And so, yeah, people, it's, it's, uh, it means an ex exertion of energy to change. I don't want to change. I want to sit easy, you know, and, and slap chips in, you know, into my mouth. That's, that's the way the fallen human being is, see? So what God wants, though, is he wants to grow us, as we talked about yesterday morning, and uh, we have to change our worldview. And a lot of us have been raised in a worldview that is, yeah, you went to the state school, the state-run school system, and they taught you that we, we evolved, life evolved from the Hun life and all that, all that absolute fairy tale. And you go through years and years of that, and then you hear it on all the, all the instructional uh, things, and, and it's everywhere. And, and so, yeah, you begin to think maybe that's the way it is. Maybe there is no God. Well, yeah. You know, what's really going on is you have a worldview, and it's, it's uncomfortable to change it. <laughs> you don't want to change it. And so you're not, not even willing to consider something else. Pharaoh was not willing even to consider something else. And so we, uh, we are creatures of habit. The devils take fullest advantage of that so that we can be destroyed. God is trying to bring us up out of that so that we can actually change our perspective and get a Bible perspective, a Bible worldview on life. So yes, the way we value the world and think about the world, it may be right, it may be wrong, but we're loath to change it. You know, what we need to do is we need to plead, plead with God to give us a love for truth that is greater than our love for convenience. I'm convinced that our generation is, is pretty much sold out into the convenience line. We love, we have everything so convenient, and we're, we're just pampered. We don't realize how convenient it is. And uh, are, am I willing to do something that's inconvenient because it's the way the truth is? Or am I just going to sacrifice the truth because, hey, this is more convenient? Do you remember back in Exodus 5, verse 2, when Aaron and Moses went in before Pharaoh, and, and what was Pharaoh's response? So oh, I do not know the Lord. I don't know the Lord. But look at God's response here at Exodus 7, verse 5. What is God's response? The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch out my hand and do these wonders. So Pharaoh says, I do not know the Lord. Who is he that I should worship him? And God's response is, well, I'll tell you what, the whole nation of Egypt's going to know that I'm the Lord. That's what I'm going to do. You don't know that I'm the Lord, and you're Pharaoh. The whole nation's going to know that I'm the Lord. Have a nice day. So that's kind of God's response. The fake gods of Egypt will be easily defeated by the true God of the Hebrews. Hey, one last observation today. The last verse in our passage points out that as Moses first confronts Pharaoh, he's 80 years old. Aaron is 83. And you know, a lot of us, a lot of people when we're at that age, we're getting worn down and just kind of very much worn down. We're not looking for adventure. Hey, Moses and Aaron had the greatest adventure of their life when they were in their 80s, see? So what we need to do is we should do our utmost to preserve our health, uh, preserve our, our clarity of mind and our ability to, to be a servant of the true God. And uh, yeah, you may find that it, however old you are, it may be that at a, at a later age in your life, 
God may give you the greatest adventure that you'll ever experience in your life in his service. So uh, Moses and Aaron here, yeah, this is going to be an 80s, 80s thing. You know, these are not, not the 1980s. This is the deliverance is going to come through a couple of guys that are in their 80s. So, so it's kind of interesting here. Uh, let's, let's, do, let's find out how to treat our bodies as temples of the Holy Spirit so that when we get into our 80s, uh, God's able to still use us. And maybe we won't be delivering a whole nation like Egypt, but I'm sure God will have some very special things for us to do, even in our more golden years. Hopefully Jesus will come before we get much further. But if, if we're just going to lounge around and wait for it, yeah, we'll probably wind up dying first. So may the Lord deliver his people and may the second coming of Jesus happen uh, before any of those things eventuate. And let's take a lesson from Moses and Aaron who are spry enough in their 80s to be used of God in the greatest adventure of their life. There's great adventure ahead in serving the Lord Jesus. God bless you.